this is our drawing paper. I'm using Arches Hot Press Watercolor Paper, which is very smooth. We're also going to need our drawing supplies. For my pencils, I'm using a 6H, 4H, 2H, HB, 2B, and 4B. We're also going to need blending stumps, two different types of erasers, a knife to cut the erasers, and a kneaded eraser. We want to make sure our erasers are very sharp, so we use a knife to create a chiseled edge to pull out highlights. For this, you can also use a pair of scissors or an X-Acto blade. So for this drawing, I went into Photoshop and purchased a skull from Adobe Stock. Um, I figured this was perfect to set up in a 3D environment to set the lighting just the way we want it for a side profile. And here's the final rendered image that we're going to use as a reference. You could pause this or take a screenshot. So the first thing we're going to need to do is set up our grid. Here I'm using a 2H pencil and a ruler. I run the ruler parallel to all the sides of the paper and put a little mark every one inch. From there, I just take my ruler and connect them all so we have a one inch square grid across the whole paper. We're going to be using this grid to help us draw our contours, which are the outlines of our skull, on our piece of paper. So here, I'm taking my paper from before, the arch is hot pressed, and what I'm doing is taking the lightest pencil I have, which is a 6H, and I'm going to do the exact same thing as before. I'm going to run my ruler parallel to all the edges, set up marks one inch across, and then connect them all using a ruler. This way I have the exact same thing as the other piece of paper, a one inch square grid across the whole page. So in the second part of our drawing, we're going to be setting up the contour. The contour basically just means the outlines and all the lines inside that separate the highlights from the shadows. In this part, I'm using a 2H pencil, trying not to press too hard to keep my drawing light. In the past and in art history, this was called the cartoon, uh, which is a word we still use today. When we think of cartoon, we think of Disney cartoons or something like that. But it's essentially the same thing. It's a flat outline of the whole image with very little shading in it. In this video, I didn't want to waste too much time showing you how to draw the actual outlines of it. I'll have a future video that goes into more detail about that, because this drawing itself, we're really going to be focusing on blending, adding values, and using our eraser to pull out highlights. This part's completely optional, but when I finish my drawing, I like to come with a kneaded eraser and go over everything to just slightly lighten it. So that way when I'm working on the actual drawing itself, the lines from the contour aren't too pronounced. A good habit to get into is to mask off the areas of the paper that you're not going to be drawing on. I'm using some blue painter's tape here to mask off the sides and the top, just so that when I'm doing the actual drawing itself, I'm not smearing graphite on areas I don't want it to be. For this part of the drawing, we're going to be adding in the values. Adding values is essentially 95% of the drawing. So what I'm going to do is here, I'm going to start with an HB pencil, and I'm going to start by filling in the eye sockets, also called the orbits. And I'm basically just coloring them in like I would with a crayon, one solid flat tone. Because when I look at my reference, I could see that it's essentially a flat dark area that doesn't have really any shading to it. And before I blend any of this, I'm going to switch to a 2H pencil and add a little bit of value up to the top of the skull, which is called the frontal lobe. You're going to see me doing this a lot in each drawing. Uh, every time I finish with a pencil, I switch over to a blending stump and use small circular motions to help smooth the graphite out. Just know there's many different ways to draw. In my drawings, I generally like the graphite smooth and blended out. Going back to the orbits, I'm going to use an HB pencil with diagonal strokes to color these in. As soon as I'm done with that, I'm going to use a blending stump again, and I'm going to blend this smooth so I have a base layer. I'm going to use a darker pencil on top of that, a 2B in this case, to fill in this area a little bit darker than it was with the HB. Here I'm using an HB pencil to darken the frontal bone, which is basically the forehead. After the graphite's laid down, with the HB pencil, I use the blending stump with small circular motions just to darken it a little bit, pressing pretty hard. And what this does is it adds a little bit of texture to the bone. So since we have graphite down, it's a good time to pull out a few highlights. Right here above the eye sockets in what's called the superorbital margin, which is basically where the eyebrows are, I'm pulling out a few little highlights right above the dark areas. 
After I do that, I go back in with a blending stump to try to blend them so the transition is not too strong between the highlight and the shadow. In the early stages of the drawing, usually around this point, I see a lot of new drawers start to give up. What happens is they start to lose confidence in comparing what the completed drawing should look like to what they have now on the paper. And this is a huge mistake because drawing takes time. This whole drawing took me probably around five, maybe six hours, and I've been drawing for a very long time. Um, the beginning part, you have to go slow. You have to take your time and try to put the values where you see them. And just know that the whole drawing will come together if you take it one little section at a time. So don't give up at this point. Now this area I want to keep pretty dark. It's called the zygomatic process of the maxilla. Uh, what I want to do is the same thing as before. Start with an HB, fill it in, blend it, and then come back in with a 2B and fill it out darker. You can see I'm doing the same thing here in the nasal bone. Now I don't want to bore you with all the names of the anatomy, but this area is called the uh, frontal process of the maxilla. And what I want to do is just have some graphite down so that I can come in with my eraser and pull out little highlights. So what I did was I started with the 2H, got some value in, blended it, and then came out back in with an HB and just worked on one little section at a time. With drawing the teeth, I wish there was some quick way or some easy fix to get this done very quickly, but there's not. The trick to it, if there is a trick, is to work very slow and pay as close attention as you possibly can to your reference, trying to replicate every little shadow and highlight. So you can see here, I drop this down to normal speed instead of speeding it up like the rest of the clip. And what I'm doing is I'm using a 2B pencil to try to fill in the dark shadows underneath the teeth and between them. While using this 2B pencil, I'm trying the best I can to not press too hard. Making mistakes in art is just part of the process and part of the drawing. So I know that if I don't press too hard on any of my pencils, I can erase the mistakes very easily. The 2B pencil is part of the B line of pencils, which are the dark pencils. They go from 2B to usually 8 or 9B, with 9B being the darkest. On the other side, you have the H pencils, from 2H all the way up to 8H, again, sometimes 9H, with that being the lightest of the pencils. The pencil right in the middle is the HB pencil. So here I'm using a 2B, which is slightly darker than the HB, but the lightest of the dark pencils. Now I'm going to go back to speeding this up because this can get kind of boring watching me work so slowly. But what you need to do, like I said before, is get in the habit of really trying to pay attention to your reference as close as possible. Try to see the things that no one else really notices, where the shadow starts, where it ends, if there's a transition between it, how bright the highlight is, if it's a light highlight or if it's a very bright one, which is called a specular highlight. Learning to pay attention is a huge part of art, and it's something you'll get better with in time and in practice. The eraser I'm using here is called a Mono Tombo Zero. They make a few different types of these. What's nice about them is they're small, and with a knife you can cut a nice chiseled edge at the end to get in for a lot of detail, like I showed at the beginning of the video. Now what I'm doing is I'm drawing with this just like I would with a pencil. The reason I could see it, obviously, is because I put graphite down beforehand, so I'm always, almost using this like I would a white paintbrush. But instead of adding the material, we're subtracting it out using the white of the paper for the highlights. When I draw, I'm always going back to my blending stump. The pencil is just used to put down the graphite. The blending stump is really used to kind of manipulate it and move it to where I need. So I'm always doing three things. First, I'm starting with a pencil, usually the lightest that I possibly can, maybe a 2H or an HB, putting down a bit of graphite in an area, and then right away switching over to the blending stump and trying to blend it smooth. Um, as soon as that's done, then I can come in with uh, my eraser to pull out some highlights. Again, when I'm done with that, I go back to my blending stump to try to smooth the transition between the highlight and the value that was there before. So it's this constant thing of switching back and forth, pencil to blending stump to eraser to blending stump. Most of the time though for the drawing, I'm using my blending stump to try to get everything smooth and evened out. Again, with drawing, there's a million ways to draw. Some people like hatching or cross hatching. They like to show the lines of the drawing. That's up to you. I mean, it's all subjective. You could draw any way you want. 
like I said before, I generally like uh, my drawing smooth and everything kind of blended out. So for that, the blending stump is the best tool. A challenge with the pencil is to fill in an area that's flat, smooth, and even. The reason is that a pencil tip is so small, comes to such a sharp point at the end, that it can get very difficult to fill in any sort of flat area. Now toward the back of the skull near the parietal bone, I'm using a 2H pencil here and I'm trying to add in long strokes holding the back of the pencil. The reason I'm holding the back is this allows me to use very, very little pressure on it. Um, so that the graphite doesn't get pressed too hard into the paper itself. Now, instead of blending this with a blending stump, what I'm going to do instead is use a tissue, like a normal Kleenex wrapped around my finger, and I'm going to use this to blend the graphite smooth into the paper. So with using the tissue, the graphite gets blended extremely smooth onto the paper. Uh, with a blending stump, you kind of get the opposite effect. You can blend it out, but it adds texture, which is nice for certain things. With the tissue, it's very useful for things like portraits or something where you want a smooth area. For this, for the back of the skull here, um, it's nice to put a base layer in of a lighter graphite, like a 2H, like I did, and blend it out with that, and then come in with a darker one, like I'm doing right now with an HB and a 2B, just to darken the values a little bit more. A good tip is do the best you can to avoid touching the paper with your bare hands or your fingertips. If you need to blend like we did before, wrap a tissue around your finger and use that. Um, the reason is there's oils on our fingertips and when you touch the paper, those oils transfer onto it. Then when you draw over it or try to blend graphite on top of it, you get this, this ugly smudge type look of graphite that's very difficult to remove. Um, it's also the same reason that I usually tape or mask off the areas that I'm not drawing on, just to keep them as clean as possible. So since this was my first video, I wanted to keep it pretty short. That's why I sped it up. The full drawing took me about five, maybe six hours. Um, and it's an okay drawing. I think if I wanted to do better or you want to do better, you're just going to have to work slow on it. Work little sections at a time, maybe 20 minutes to a half hour sittings, and then come back to it. So if you want to practice drawing, I say give this one a shot because the skull is a great way to help practice uh, the portrait. It's a much more forgiving version because it's the, uh, the structure underneath the skin. So if you try it, I wish you the best of luck. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.